Let's get into a spoiler-free movie review. If you are watching on YouTube, you already know this, but to those listening on the podcast, I am a method acting movie reviewer or a method movie reviewer, however you want to put it. I get into my movie roles, so I wanted to fully encapture what it feels like to be John Wick, so I am channeling my inner Keanu Reeves. I'm in a suit and tie right now because in order to bring you the best John Wick 4 movie review, I got to get into it. I try to do that for every single movie review I do on this podcast. So you know, I am bringing you my A game. I look good. I feel good. I very much identify with one particular aspect of Keanu Reeves' character in this movie. So I can't wait to get into that. And I'll say right here at the top of the review, hands down, the best John Wick movie ever made. But it's one of the most important blockbusters right now. And... I want to give my full thoughts on this entire movie, so before we get into that, here is just a little bit of the John Wick 4 trailer. 42 regular, wasn't it? Yeah. And so it begins. Challenge him to single combat. If you win, you'll have your freedom. And when I see you, I'm going to take what I want, so... Amen. The only way John Wick will ever have freedom and peace is in death. Yeah, not really. All right, so John Wick Chapter 4. I went into this movie, and I don't watch John Wick movies for the plot, but this one exceeded my expectations on that. What this movie is about, we have Keanu Reeves back as America's favorite hitman, and he's trying to get back his freedom. He has been running from the high table. Everybody in the world wants to kill John Wick, and he is trying to develop a plan to be able to live a peaceful life so he no longer has to live on the run. He can finally sit down and relax and be a normal person. But is that in the cards for John Wick when so many people want to kill him, when so many people hate him? Well, for that, you have to really watch the whole movie. But let's get into some of the things that really stood out to me about this movie. First up, Keanu Reeves. The craziest thing about Keanu Reeves in John Wick Chapter 4 is that he only says 380 words throughout the entire movie. This movie is almost three hours long, and that's all he says. I didn't realize at the time of watching this movie that that was intentional, but he actually sat down with the writer and the director to strip his dialogue because that is what he wanted for his character in this movie. And at times, it feels a little bit odd. You have all these other characters around him, like Lawrence Fishburne, delivering these really poignant things to John Wick, even for an action movie. And his response is his now classic catchphrase, yeah. I just thought it was impactful to have a lead in a movie have so little dialogue. And it made me feel like I too could someday become a movie star because outside of this podcast, if somebody's not talking to me about movies or The Simpsons, I'm not saying much. So I very much feel like John Wick in chapter four. Someone could ask me my innermost thoughts and I feel like John Wick, and I'm just like, yeah. This is his longest line of dialogue in the entire movie. You and I left a good life behind a long time ago, my friend. That is the most you hear him speak at one time in this movie. Just by watching the trailer, you probably see at least 10 to 15% of what he says in the entire movie. I think that's an incredible accomplishment and also speaks a lot to Keanu Reeves. Is As an actor, he is not afraid to take a beating. Other action stars have these clauses in their contracts where you can't hit them in the face, they can't lose a fight, they have to come out looking like this big, strong hero, <clears throat> The Rock, but not Keanu Reeves. And that is what I love so much about the John Wick movies is oftentimes in action movies, the hero is bulletproof. You don't see them get hurt. Not John Wick. He gets stabbed, he gets punched, he gets thrown off of buildings, he gets shot. There are so many things that should take him out, but he keeps on going. He doesn't really go around just killing people for fun. He is trying to win back his freedom. So he's not afraid to take you out, but he's not necessarily seen as just a vicious, horrible person. And that is why we all root for John Wick. So when it comes to the runtime in this movie, it was probably the thing I was a little bit apprehensive about. Anything that starts to tinker on that three hour mark, I start to question, does it really warrant that runtime? I am not afraid of a long movie, but I don't like movies that are long just for the sake of being long. There was a rumored four to five hour 
cut of this movie and they said they were able to get it under three hours, which was a big accomplishment for them. They didn't know what else to cut out. I knew that going into this movie and I thought I could still cut out about 20 minutes because for the first 20 minutes of this movie, not a whole lot happens. They're really trying to set the stage, but I felt like even in some of the shots later in the movie, the pacing on those was a little bit stretched out. So I think they easily could have cut out another 20 minutes of this movie and then it would have been the perfect movie. But after that first initial 20 minutes in the movie, you get your first big action scene and then it's pretty much nonstop throughout the entire movie. Once this movie gets going, it does not let off the gas. And what you get in John Wick Chapter 4 is all the choreography that you've loved throughout this entire franchise. What I felt like was a little bit different, it was almost a little bit more sophisticated. Because in the first two John Wick movies, I felt like they really set this tone of almost just being brutal for the sake of being brutal. A lot of headshots, a lot of more disturbing violence that was jarring at the time but now we've seen way worse things on screen that we got a little bit used to it so I felt like John Wick chapter 4 toned that down a little bit but where it really turned the level up was on all the choreography and I got to give a shout out to all the stunt performers on this movie who make it look flawless if you watch the behind the scenes on the making of this movie I am not convinced that stunt performers are human you have them literally falling down stairs and then just chilling there at the bottom like nothing happened, getting up. All right, we got to do another take. I would take one trip down those stairs and not get up for a week. So for the long list of stunt performers, thank you. Thank you from me and all the movie crew, for that matter, for putting your body on the line for the sake of entertainment. And I think it was really cool what Keanu Reeves did. And he seems like a very genuinely nice person off camera. And I think that's also why the entire country, the entire world is in love with him. But he always makes it a point to get them a very cool rap gift. And for this movie, he got them all custom made shirts, which sounds like a really cool thing for a rich person to do. In the past, he's also purchased for his stunt performers custom Rolexes, which... I would take the Rolex over the shirt. I'm not that fancy. I don't know what it means to have a custom shirt, but it sounds like a nice gesture. Aside from the choreography, this movie just looks magnificent, and it travels across a lot of different terrains. You have desert, you have the city, you have him in the snow. It feels like this movie goes through a lot of different temperatures, so visually, it was a treat on the eyes. And I will say, a lot of this movie takes place at night. And something else, I don't shout out a whole lot, but the lighting was superior in this movie because for all those nighttime shots, everything was perfectly well lit. Now, I feel like other shows and other movies could really learn something from the John Wick lighting department. In the past, in shows like Game of Thrones, we remember watching those shows and having to turn up the brightness on our TVs because we couldn't see anything. It was so dark. But in all of these nighttime scenes with all these things going on, you have people flying left and right, rounds of bullets just going off and on, and you can see every single thing. And it just looks amazing on the big screen. This is a movie that I feel like going to see it in an actual theater really enhances that experience with the big screen being able to see everything perfectly lit and of course the sound having all of those moments really rattle inside your chest i really love that aspect of it too as you know i'm a big fan of color and what else i like were the little touches of neon throughout those darkly lit scenes by the way did you know that john wick's full name is jonathan wicker basket i know that because i just made it up so don't google that that is not a real fact and don't come at me in the comments but going back to keanu reeves performance with him speaking so few lines in this movie it almost felt like all the other actors had to work a little bit harder to carry the movie so you have your villain here played by bill skarsgård who I thought he was okay. I don't really feel like he was that much of a threat. And they spent a lot of the movie in separate locations. I didn't think he was that menacing of a villain. Who I really loved was Donnie Yen as Kang. He was so good in this movie. I fell in love with this character. And I believe that they should make a prequel 
or maybe after they're done with all these movies, make a solo film just on his story. He is blind, but he is able to take people out in such a cool, calm, collected way. I love the part where his character is first introduced into this movie, into the first fight scene. He is just chilling, eating some ramen, and then just straight up obliterates an entire room of people. And that is what I love about this movie. The big, elaborate sequences that are just nonstop. And you think at some point this would get boring and repetitive. But throughout this entire movie, they just got bigger and more elaborate and there were so many things going on, you can't help but be entertained. So how does John Wick deliver as an action movie? Unlike any other franchise out there, this franchise is right up there in the top tier level of action movies because it has heart, because it has a lot of cinematic value, because it has a great cast, and it's also just a very distinct movie. So my biggest criticism in this movie is I really wish it would have got into the action a little bit quicker. I'll admit, I got a little bit worried in those first 20 minutes that maybe they don't have it anymore. Maybe these movies are going to start to be a little bit boring. So had me worried in those first 20 minutes. I do love their commitment on not getting cheesy with these movies, where other action movies add a little bit of levity. This movie doesn't really let up. There are some moments that are unintentionally funny. I think when it comes to just John Wick's mannerisms, whenever Keanu Reeves is running I find he has kind of a funny run, so I tend to laugh at that. And there are some other aspects of his character that seem a little bit ridiculous. The thing that surprised me the most about this movie was my performance. Not once did I have to get up and go pee, so patting myself on the back for that. So if you've loved every other John Wick movie, you are going to love Volume 4. So even though it had me worried in the beginning in those first 20 minutes... I didn't want it to end. It did hit me on an emotional level whenever Lance Reddick was on screen and his entire tragic story of passing away just days before this movie came out because he's been so great in this entire franchise. So it was a weird moment for me and everybody else who's seen this movie where real life suddenly connects with this fake movie life where we think, oh, everything is all great. And seeing him on screen just, whew, it kind of hits you a little bit. The John Wick movies are just so well produced. They have such a distinct style that I don't think any other action movie in this decade is going to top this movie. So for my rating, I am giving John Wick Chapter 4 4.5 out of 5 bullet wounds.